welcome to another edition of Flying with TFC. In this flight, I want to try something a little bit unusual, non-standard, a little odd, perhaps, but it derives from a question that came up some time back, and it basically was, what is the top velocity you can achieve in Orbiter 2010? And so, I have parked myself out here on Triton, at Triton Base, which is, actually it's a copy of Brighton Base on uh, the moon, but that's fine. And Triton is one of the moons of Neptune, which if you look up this way, you can see it in the sky. And I turn on planetarium mode, and you see that's Neptune, there's Proteus, and there's Nereid. Okay. So... I propose to find out how fast we can get going in Orbiter 2010. We've got an XR5 on the pad here. And if we jump inside and have a look at the payload, and I'll just use the payload editor for this, you see the payload is completely full. And the first six slots are locks. The remaining payload is all fuel. So there's lots of liquid oxygen, lots of fuel. And if we look down here, we see there's one crew and the liquid the oxygen supply is actually pegged at 9999 days. But I believe this amount of oxygen for one crew member will last considerably longer than that. And of course there's no scram fuel. We have an insane amount of actual fuel full load of APU fuel and so on and uh, so the ship has what it needs to go for a very long time with a single pilot okay so let's go ahead and start some things up let's go ahead and put orbit MFD up here no I didn't want that I wanted this orbit and over here I don't know what to put over here because we don't really need much of anything just yet so all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover up off the pad. I'm going to rotate to 90 degrees and proceed to head up into orbit. Oh, here, there's a thought. Align planes, target, Neptune. And I'm not sure if that's going to make... I'm not sure if that's right. Uh, I'm doing this kind of off the cuff here. I, I've never actually tried a mission like this, so we're just going to try it and see what happens. What I'm aiming for is kind of an equatorial orbit around Neptune. And perhaps I can get that better with target Neptune. On orbit MFD. And the inclination, 138.88. Uh, I don't know. We'll get it figured out. Anyway, it's time to go ahead and switch on in external on cooling M2. off. And let's just hover up off the pad and get this thing in motion. APU offline. Okay. Okay, Wheels lifting up. off. Gear up. Gear up and locked. Okay. RCS to rotation. Rotate to 90 degrees and then head for orbit. I don't recall if Neptune has an atmosphere, so that's why I'm not bothering to use the AF controls. Overshoot. In 
Information. APU running. Yes, it is. Okay. Start going forward. Pitch up a bit. And I think we can shut the hover engines off now. going to make for orbit. Say a good 100, 150 kilometer orbit. Should be sufficient for Triton. Leaving the base behind. Information. APU running. APU off to stop the nag. Right, let's go no target for right now, just so we can see this. Okay, it's giving me Mach numbers, so there must be some atmosphere here. But it certainly doesn't seem to have a whole lot going on. Close hover doors, which I should have done already. Apoapsis, six kilometers, and we're almost into an orbit. I'm going to push it up to about 20. Make this so I can read it. Okay, 35, fine. Time to apoapsis. Okay, we got plenty of time. Let's go ahead and... Get the radiator deployed before I forget about it. Put a time warp. Okay. All right, time to avalapsis. 1,700 seconds. It's right there. Okay. Let's get over to that. Circularize. Getting close, go ahead and turn prograde. Switch the hut to orbit mode. And this shouldn't take but just a click or two of main engine. coming up. All right, that's good. Okay, now that we have an orbit, figure out, let's see. I'm thinking here to just go ahead and burn for Triton escape, but that's not necessarily the best way to do that. Let's get transects. 
We want escape from Triton. A graph projection that makes sense. target there. We just need some negative prograde to come down to orbit around Triton, which actually doesn't need to be that low. It's probably better if it's not low. Okay. Or does it need to be low in order to get a relative inclination? Or an encounter view? Okay, you know what? Turn that off. I'm just gonna... Oh. Something I... I, I managed to hit something that wasted some fuel. Oh well. I think I'm just gonna go with this. Stay in prograde mode. And let's burn for Triton Escape. This is probably not the best way to do this, but I'm going to do it this way anyhow. And all I want is Triton Escape. I don't want to necessarily escape Neptune just yet. But I want to get Triton Escape, get the eccentricity high enough to escape Triton, and begin getting into actual orbit around Neptune. That's it, right there. Okay. Okay, now, making sure that nothing's running that shouldn't be, warp time forward and get out of the Triton sphere of influence. That occurs to me. Turn this on. No. Orbit. Reference Neptune. Target Triton. Okay. There we go. We're coming out here. We're getting farther away from Triton as we get down to Neptune Periapsis. We're coming up on the node. Almost completely out of the, nep the Triton sphere of influence from the looks of the gravity meter here. Time warp a little bit faster. O point one, O point zero. Okay. Now. Now, can we do this with aligned planes? Current orbit, we want Neptune. Get the relative inclination to Neptune down to zero. So orbit normal. And let's bring that down. But that's going up. So even though it says normal, apparently we need anti-normal.
Retro doors are closed. All right, now go back to normal and fix that. Overshot just a little. Translation. Fix fine a little bit with. Okay. Now, if we go prograde, we should be. That sort of almost looks like equatorial with Neptune, but I wouldn't necessarily count on it being that way, but it should do for my purpose. All right. Get around to Neptune periapsis, 52,000 seconds. And at that point, we will burn for Neptune escape. So, once again, shut everything off, kill rotate, and time warp around to Neptune periapsis. Periapsis time is still going down, although it looks like no, well, looks like we went past it, but the periapsis time is still going down. Getting close. That is periapsis, but for some reason we had to go all the way around to get to it, even though we apparently passed it. A little strange, in my opinion, but then again, this whole flight is a little odd. All right. Turn prograde. Prograde off and let us now burn for Neptune escape. Oh, that's right. If I'm not mistaken, Neptune is kind of on its side. Axial tilt to somewhere close to 80 or 90 degrees or something. Just burn this until our eccentricity is greater than one and we're on a path to escape the orbit of Neptune. And we're no doubt, yes, we're burning empty fuel mod emptying fuel modules, so we'll have to jettison those. By the way, I should say this before I get very far into this, that I'm going to be breaking this up into 30-minute episodes. I know there's going to be some very long time warp phases, and I'm going to basically skip recording most of the time warp stuff, the long time warp phases, because this flight is going to actually be years in duration. Many years. and. Uh, 20 and 30 minute time warp things I don't think very many people are going to want to watch. But the time warp won't have me actually doing anything during that time, so there won't be anything missed. And also, if you hear my fan in the background, I apologize for that, but it's absolutely necessary since the air conditioning doesn't work. Time warp a little bit here to get through this a little faster. That's good right there. We have an escape trajectory leaving Neptune. 
And I guess I don't need that one right now. Oh, there's something I should have thought of. Map. Reference Neptune. And, uh... Show orbit planes. Apparently, that's not going to take the ship as a target. Interesting. take the ship as a target. Okay. I was thinking to see what kind of an orbit plane we have here, but I should have probably done that while I was still in orbit around Neptune, because now we're on a trajectory headed out. And now's one of those long time warp things. Make sure everything is shut off, kill rotate, and now for a long time warp until Neptune's gravitational influence reaches zero. And for that, I'm going to pause recording. Okay, here we are. It is now 303 days into the flight. And if we check down here in the oxygen supply, it still says 9999. So, we're good for a long time on oxygen. And the first thing I need to do is get up here into the payload bay and start the APU, open the doors. Speed that up. And now, I need to get rid of the empty main fuel tanks, and so we'll just deploy Payload those. Deployed. Payload deployed. Payload deployed. Payload deployed. Payload deployed. Payload deployed. Used quite a few of them. Payload Just deployed. getting away from Triton and Neptune. Payload deployed. Payload deployed. Payload deployed. We don't want to mess with that mass. Each empty container is 4,000 kilograms, so... Payload that's a bunch deployed. of mass that we don't need to be hauling around. Payload deployed. Payload deployed. All right, that one's not empty. How's our oxygen tanks? Plenty. All right. Time warp, let those drift away. Very good. All right. Okay. Yeah, that'd be Neptune system over there. And there's the sun, which is where we're going. Hop back inside, start the APU, close the doors. APU off, we're done with that for now. Okay, if we bring up burn time calculator, we still have 7.9 kilometers per second worth of delta V in the main. And actually, there's a whole bunch more because I should actually add up the extra fuel mass of the uh, payload. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that and put that in as extra fuel mass. I'll add that up and be right back. All right. I've done the math on this here. And basically what I've found is that there is... 17 total fuel modules remaining. 16 of them are full, plus one that is most of the way full. And adding up the mass of fuel in each one of those, not the whole container, just the fuel mass, that's 218,544 kilos of additional fuel. So if I put in the extra fuel mass, and what was that number? Two eighteen five forty four. Ah. Two one eight five four four. We have eighteen 
2.6 kilometers per second worth of delta V available. And that will go up a little bit as we use oxygen and deploy expended modules. Okay, so now that, okay, let's go back to the big display. Now that we are technically out of uh, Neptune's sphere of influence, auto reference, okay. And how long are we till apoapsis? 181,000 seconds. Basically here. So I'm going to go ahead and continue time warping until I reach the sun's apoapsis, at which time we will be doing our first major course correction in reference to the sun. Time warp active. Okay, here we are, back after a long time warp. The ship has been in flight for 6.17 years, which you can see here, 2,253 days. Our oxygen supply is still pegged at 9999, which is all those LOX modules for one person, so... And the main reason for that is that this ship will not let you do anything if you run out of oxygen, because the pilot will be dead. In actuality, a flight like this would have the pilot in hibernation for the long phase where there is nothing going on except time warp. All right, let's go back to the big view here. And we're just in time to get lined up with prograde. Actually, no, I want retrograde. And if we miss it by a few seconds, it's not going to matter, given how far we are out from the sun. 30.16 astronomical units. An astronomical unit being the mean distance from the Earth to the sun. So that's a long ways. All right, it is now time to do the retrograde burn. Full thrust. time warp through this, bring the periapsis altitude all the way down, and maybe even make it a bit negative. Burning through fuel modules again. We might have even burned through a LOX module, we'll have to look. Sun periapsis down to as low as we can get it. Getting down there really low. Okay, we have a negative sun periapsis. That's good. Normally you wouldn't think so, but for this situation, it is. All right. First order of business is I'm going to go ahead and deploy the empty fuel modules. Payload deployed. Which is going to be quite a few of them payload deployed 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 payload 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 deployed Okay, that one's not empty, and the rest of them are full. 
Okay. Time warp to let those things float away. Close the bay doors. Shut off the APU. Okay. All right. We have. I'll have to do the math on how much extra fuel mass we now have and update that, but we'll take care of that in the next episode. I'm going to go ahead and end this part here, since we're right around the 30-minute mark, and next time we'll pick up with the beginning of the sun dive. We are headed straight for the sun. Our current altitude is 30.16 AU. Our velocity is 37.54 meters per second. This ship will never move that slow again. And we'll see how fast we can get it to go. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'm out.